So with more on this case now, let's bring in our legal panel. Jonas Spilbor is a former prosecutor and criminal defense attorney. Dan Shore, a former prosecutor as well. John, I was surprised mm -hmm. myself. Two and a third to seven years, that's all? And, and that's the maximum she can get? Yep. So this really was not a surprise, John, because the judge gave her exactly what was predetermined behind closed doors. This was a result of a plea agreement. In other words, the, the state, the prosecutor said, we're not going to pile on any additional charges, which it could have, in exchange for her pleading guilty and agreeing to two, two and a third to seven years in prison. She got exactly what she asked but for. But there was talk about uh, about a uh, conspiracy to commit mm -hmm. murder for, for, for plotting to kill her husband. I mean, there were a lot of other things. That, that she could have been charged with. Right, they could have made a stretch and tried to charge her with that, but it would have been tough because they would have had to have someone else corroborate what she really did tell one of the inmates, one of them who is deceased. Maybe they could have used her admissions. I think because they were getting this plea and because she was agreeing to go to prison for two and a third to seven, they decided not to sentence her to more prison time. But she certainly morally probably deserves more. Not only are there the $23 million in costs, there's also the, the, this highly dangerous search these officers had to go through in a heavily wooded area for two murderers. The best thing I can say for her, Jonna, is that she didn't go through with the plan to be the getaway driver. She right. apparently got cold feet at the very mm -hmm. last minute. She stopped short of that, thankfully, because mm -hmm. God only knows if these two had actually hurt people or killed somebody, that blood would have been at least partially on her hands. Not to mention that she almost tried to off her own husband. Thankfully, that didn't happen. But beside from all of that, and she didn't put anybody through trial. We didn't have to impanel a jury, spend even more money to go to trial on this case. But, John, she, when she gets out of prison, she's going to be getting her pension. That's the part that chaps me. That, that's untouched. That's, uh, and part of it too, Dan, is, you know, she says, oh, I was afraid. I went along with this plot because I was afraid that these guys were going to kill my husband. That's what they were threatening to do. Hello, they're in prison. I mean, right. I, it, it, just so much of her story makes no sense. And if I were the judge, I would take that into consideration. And the judge did say, I don't believe you when you say you were in fear, because there were many, many opportunities for her to report this. As you said, they were in prison. She could have said, this is what they're doing. Even once she started to help them, there were so many times where she could have said, I've made a mistake. I'm going to put an end to this, because it was going on for a long time before they escaped. And she failed to do that. There, yeah. there, there were also indications that, that she was having sex with these guys behind bars, mm -hmm. and yet she denied it with respect to one of the individuals in particular. I mean, her story is just full of holes. Yeah, completely. Hacksaws don't end up in chopped meat by themselves. We get that. But, but part of that story makes her a little bit sympathetic, and was she under the thumb of these hardened criminals? And that's what partly prompted her to do this. Perhaps. She's going to go to prison for up to seven years, so I think justice was served. In the meantime, the one surviving prisoner, David Sweat, uh, was supposed to have or, or was supposed to go to court. He's negotiating some kind of a plea agreement. How do you negotiate a plea agreement if you're already in prison for life with no possibility of parole on the murder conviction and now you've got all these escape and collusion charges add on. It's added probably on. just a procedural thing. Ultimately, you would imagine he would plead guilty to escape. It's a weird situation. He's facing life without right. parole. He can't go anywhere anyway. So any additional time wouldn't add to how much he's going to serve. On his side, he's not going to face any danger from going to trial. So maybe he'd want to do it for the show or maybe right. he would avoid trial because he just doesn't want to be in the public light anymore. It's really on him. But but ultimately, he'll be convicted of escape. There's no doubt about that. He yeah. may be angling for slightly better treatment. Apparently, they've got him in a cell now that has no windows. He's there 23 hours a day in complete solitary confinement. Mm -hmm. And that is the only benefit to him in negotiating some sort of plea bargain. Because the, the only way this sentence makes any sort of difference in his life is if his underlying life sentence somehow gets vacated. And the chances of that happening are slim to none. I don't know if he's in the middle of the appellate process or if that ship has sailed. So this is really just pro forma. And even for the nicer prison cell, there's no leverage on his part because it's yeah. a clear case that he's guilty of escape. So there's really not much he can offer. But, but there is going to be some kind of a plea agreement, some kind well, of these, a plea deal. These things always take time, this procedural wrangling between the prosecutor mm -hmm. and the defense attorney. Mm -hmm. So I think this will play itself out. Ultimately, he'll obviously be convicted. At least yeah. the people in up, upstate New York uh, don't have to worry anymore. I mean, that was a scary time. This About summer. these two, yeah. anyway. Yeah. Jonas right. Billboard right. and Shore. Thank you both. Thanks. Thank you.